our little angels are not always little angels. Sometimes they are not right. We get, we find ourselves committing ourselves to saying, well, my baby won't ever do this. My baby won't ever do that. But the devil is a lie. You need to understand because the word teaches us that we're supposed to drive foolishness from the hearts of our children. We're supposed to do what's right by our children. We have to let the rod be broke and let that child live. Amen. But instead, we got rods that are living around our children. And our children are dying. Our children are being torn down. Our children are being put through all kinds of things because we will not break the rock. Right. My God, my God, my God. The mother condoned him. Then she hired someone to make an idol for him. Huh? That's like a mother hiring someone to go buy crack cocaine for their child. Come on, come on. She hired someone to make an idol for him. She hired someone to help her son be disobedient. We know that he obviously was not repentant. And then she goes and condones and rewards his ungodly behavior. Parents, when you spare the rod, you will spoil the child and you will bring the curses upon your children. Amen. One writer says she didn't condemn him. And the reason she didn't condemn him was that she had taught him well as a thief. Because if you go back and you really read this thing, because we, we spend a lot of time just glancing at things, not really reading things. But if you go back and really study this thing, if you go back and really study this, you see that she had promised every bit of that silver to her son to make an idol. But she only provided 200 pieces of silver toward that idol. Mm -hmm. So she was a thief as well as her son, so her son had learned well. But after receiving the idol, Micah, does the abominable thing, which is to set up false worship. False worship is really tricky, though. It's really tricky because it shows up in the church in the oddest ways and things which seem so innocent. The enemy gets you so busy running, and while you are running, he's building a stronghold of an altar for false worship inside of you. One thing which Michael used was searching for entertainment. He looked first to his son, who was not a true Levite, which is a violation of the law, but then by chance, a homeless man, a Levite from Bethlehem, Judah, happens to come upon Michael, and Michael took this man in. He voted his son out as the pastor and voted this man in as his pastor, someone who would tickle his ears. It's interesting that the one he added was a man who was a Levite, but he was not from a Levitical city. Huh? Bethlehem, Judah was not a Levitical city. That is should make you wonder. If you are a Levite, why are you not in a Levitical city? Why are you not from a Levitical city? What happened to cause you to leave that Levitical city? In other words, what it is that what is it that you are trying to hide here? Plenty of people do that. They'll they'll leave one church and come to another. That pastor over there wasn't right. He didn't do such and such. He didn't recognize the gift that was upon my life. He didn't recognize the anointing that was sitting right there before him. He would not use me to do such and such. He would not use me to do this. He would not use me to do that. And the pastor all asked the question, well, what happened over there? Why? There had to be a reason. Reading on in the story. In today's world, it's so easy to fall into false worship. It's easy. We are so detached from the truth. We are. We want the truth to be whatever it is we think the truth is. We want the truth to be what makes us happy in our fleshly body. Huh? We are so detached from the truth. So it's no surprise after the rapture that Jesus says that the state of human depravity will come such that the unthinkable becomes reality. Matthew 24, 15, I have to read it for you. When ye therefore see the abomination of the desolation, this is after the rapture, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, stand in the holy place. Whosoever readeth this, understand this. Listen to what Jesus is saying. Then he said, let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. In other words, get to go down. Huh? Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Don't even take him. Begin to run when you see the abomination of the desolation taking his place in the holy place. Yes, yes. Right. It says, and woe unto him that is with her that is with this child. 
and to them that give suck in those days, the one who breastfeeds. But pray ye that your flight be not in the wind. It says we don't know the day or the hour that Jesus will come. Oh my God, can you imagine him coming to an ice storm? Huh? It says, neither let it be on the Sabbath. My God, my God. Huh? So, 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 for then shall be great tribulation, uh -huh. such as not sinning since the beginning of the world mm -hmm. or time, nor shall ever be. And except those days be shortened, there shall be no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. See, there's a lot of elect that will be fooled by the foolishness that's going on in this world. Yeah. I was talking to someone recently, a pastor recently, saying that I'm going this way because this is the way I always voted, and I believe in such and such, except for the elect be fooled. The elect is being fooled because you see the foolishness that's out there that these people support, but yet you are supporting them. My God. And it says, then, if any man shall say unto you, lo, here is Christ, or dare, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs oh and false prophets and shall show you great signs and wonders. And as much as it is possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And then Jesus finishes up saying, Behold, I have told you before. Can I do some comparison? Mm -hmm. Let me compare And I was thinking, I said, you know, there's a stark comparison between the U.S. and Israel. There's, there's, there's something about the U.S. and Israel. Before Israel went into captivity, there was a certain state that they were in. Yes, right. The certain things that they were doing that resulted in their going into captivity. Uh -huh. I searched the phrase on the internet, idolatry, and compared Israel's idolatry to U.S. idolatry and found more pages than I can count. But there's a few things that was prevalent in those pages that I look at that really should stick out to us. Uh -huh. First of all, when a nation turns its back on God, when a nation that was established on godly principle, when a nation that cried out to God and said, Lord, deliver me, Lord, make it whereas we are a great nation, but then turn their back on God, then they're going to face the wrath of God. Thank you. Another thing I saw, when a nation tries to change God's law because it is uncomfortable to them. Huh? Because they want to live the way that they want to live. Because they want to, to feel as if, well, if I allow them to do what they want to do, then I'm allowed to do what I want to do. When the law of God becomes such an uncomfortable thing that they want to change it, then you're heading toward destruction. Third thing, when idol worship becomes not just the norm, but when law promotes it as well as protects. Not many years ago, there's no way we would have had a Wiccan prayer in the opening of Congress. It just wasn't going to happen. It wasn't going to happen. Not many years ago, we would not have had a Muslim Elam at the opening prayer of the Supreme Court. It just was not going to happen. It just was not going to happen. But can I give you something? Let me give you something. In a poem at the 44th president's inauguration, and I think you know what that is. That was a strange phrase that was read. A very strange phrase that was read in this poem that he was condoning. It said, first do no harm, and take no more than you need. I'm teaching more than you're saying amen, but that's all right, you're gonna hear it. First do no harm, and take no more than you need. It seems like it's a harmless phrase, but this phrase is a rewording of the famous devil worshiper Alistair Crossley, Crawley's words, which is the mantra for people such as Jay-Z today. His phrase was, do what thou wilt. Simply mean that having rules are not conducive to living a life where the flesh is celebrated. Mm -hmm. If you got rules, then you cannot live a life where the flesh enjoys everything that the flesh wants to do. If you follow those true rules, the do is whatever. The Tao is the religious nature of mankind. Doing right is called harm, and taking only what is needed is living a life unhindered by living right. When Israel got into the state, Israel faced destruction. My fear is the U.S. is in this state even today. Until we get to the point where we appeal back to heaven. Until we get to the point of saying, Lord, we need you in our lives more than we need things in our lives. Until we start worshiping the one true God. My God, my God. Fourth thing. Is 
Israel was in a chaotic state because it said that there was no king, so people did what they wanted to. In other words, there has to be leadership that wants to do right in order for people to want to live right. But when leadership chooses to do wrong and people choose to go in their own way or they choose to follow that leader that's doing wrong, the people are taking up the practices of the nations that were around them. God told them, he warned them, don't take up the practices of the nations that were around them. Don't take up their abominable practices. You know, it's one as a liberal, as people, as liberals as the U.S. is, as liberal as people think that the U.S. is, it really isn't as bad as England. I've lived in these places before. It's not as bad as France. I've lived in these places before. And it's certainly not as bad as Germany. I lived in these places before because same-sex marriage was allowed or civil unions were allowed in these places at least 15 years before before the U.S. got silly and did the same thing. My God, my God. The Netherlands became the first country to do so. And in this small country, they were followed by the other Western European countries. And over a period of time, the leader of the Western world, which is the United States of America, has done the exact same thing. See, when a nation turns its back on God, they will grow into nations of no rule. And they are for chaotic. Who would have thought just a few years ago, just a few years ago, that policemen would be wholesale on the list of endangered species? Who would have thought just a few years ago, huh? Even the worst of criminals respected the police. Huh? Even the worst of criminals is respected police. But then we got this culture going to place. We got these rap singers that began to tell you to kill the police, blank, blank the police. We began to see it's where they had absolutely no respect for these people and you wonder why these people are on edge all the time. When they go out there, they're not going out there to lose their life for foolishness. But when a nation turns its back on God, things do become chaotic. They become chaotic. Further, let me read to you Romans 1 in the Amplified Version of the Bible. For God does not overlook sin. Hmm? He does not overlook sin. This is 17, 18. He does not overlook sin. And the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness suppress and stifle the truth. Huh? Haven't we had a lot? Wicked men and women who are suppressing or stifling the truth. Huh? Who don't want the truth to come out because they want to live the way that they want to live. Let me read some more of this. Because that which is known about God is evident within them. In their inner consciousness, even the worst of sinners. Because God reveals himself. John 1 tells you that. For God made it evident to them. For ever since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine natures have been clearly seen, being understood through his workmanship. Look around you. All his creations are wonderful things he has made so that they who fail to believe and trust in him, they are not without excuse. They are not with excuse and they are without defense. For even though they knew God as the creator, they did not honor him as God or give thanks for his wondrous creation. On the contrary, they became worthless in their thinking. Claiming to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory and majesty and excellence of the immoral, immortal God for an image, idols, in the shape of mortal man and birds and four-footed animals. Oh, we have some living idols today, don't we? We talk about it every Tuesday, Monday, wherever even the American Idol come on. Huh? But that's just in terms of, of a phrase for them. But we have some idols that we have that we have to be very careful of. There are living idols. Right. People. Because they have achieved something no one else has achieved, they become idols to our mind. We got to be very careful because you never know who the next Olympic star is going to be on the box of Wheaties or Cheerios. Oh my God, can I, can I teach you for a minute? Anybody know who Caitlyn Jenner is? Huh? Anybody know who Caitlyn Jenner is? I saw a few people shook their head. I know, you know. Anybody know who Bruce Jenner is? Huh? 
Bruce Jenner back in the 1970s, he was on the box of wood, a wheat. He was the man then, right? Mm -hmm. He was on the box of Wheaties and all everything else. He was multi-millionaire, blah blah blah. And we just idolized Bruce Jenner. But look at him now. I saw him in some heels and a little bit black dress. Huh? A man who won what they called the decathlon at the time. That's the decathlon, right? He won the decathlon, which means 10, right? Which means that he won 10 events. He beat out 10 people to win all those events. He won the decathlon at that time. He was a manly man, but you didn't know what was really going on inside. So we have a lot of people who, who followed Bruce Jenner, who thought he was just the total it. But look at him now. In the same path of destruction that he's going down, they're following him down the same path. The same path. My God, let me read some more of this. Therefore God gave them over to their own lust of hearts, to sexual impurity, so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. So, Mr. Bruce had to learn how to piece it down, I guess. His body was dishonored. Huh? Abandoned them to the degrading power of their sin. Because by choice, their choice, they exchanged the truth of God for a lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them over to the great and vile passions. For the women exchanged the natural function with that which is unnatural. A function that's contrary to nature. And in the same way, also the men turned away from the natural function of the woman and were consumed with their desire toward one another, men with men committing shameful acts, and in return receiving their bodies then ever an appropriate penalty for their wrongdoing. False worship. False worship. The result of false worship is just so evident in this country today. It's evident in the direction we are going as a country, which should make us cry out for more, saying, what is real worship? What is real worship? Is real worship the rearing back of the hand on the ear and stuff? Is that real worship? Is real worship running around the room just because you got excited in yourself because you had a little bit of zeal that happened to you? No, real worship is when you say, Lord, I worship you in spite of what's going on in my life. This is real worship. It's not the pepped up, trumped up uh, uh, um, emotions that we have in the church today is when you just glorify God because he's God all by himself. Yes. What is real worship? What is real worship? Real worship is a combination of attitude and acts focused on the reverence of God. Huh? There's a lot of people that can't even get excited unless, unless the, 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 uh, the keyboard goes crazy. They can't begin to get excited unless the keyboard just goes crazy. That's the keyboard just loses his mind. That's when they begin to get excited. Huh? What is real worship? Real worship is a combination of attitude and acts that are reverencing God, not reverencing the sound of the middle C on the keyboard, not reverencing the sound of the hi-hat or the cymbal, but reverencing God Almighty. Real worship. There's a Hebrew word called yada, which denotes a bowing down or a prostrating to oneself. It's a posture that reflects homage unto God. It's a posture where you don't care what it is that you have on. You can have on all white, but yet you're going to reverence God because there's no white brighter than the God that lives up high. If we have a problem with worship, and some people do, some people have a problem with worship. They have a problem with worship. They have a problem with worshiping God. The problem isn't with God. It's not God's problem. He didn't do it. He's well deserving of the worship. The problem is with you. You be the problem. Huh? God does not have to prove himself over and over to you. Did you get up this morning? That's proof. Did you breathe on your own? That's proof. Hallelujah. Did you drive in a car with a race or ride on explosion? That's proof. That's already proof. Oh my God. Did you did you pass through something that could kill you? That's proof. The proof is already in the pudding. Yes, yes. 
God does not have to prove himself over and over again with you. Another thing about worship, worship speaks to your relationship.